Hello and welcome to another video of uh, time series forecasting. In this video, I'm going to talk about a very important concept of autocorrelation and we are going to use this concept extensively in this course. So in my previous video, I talked about the concept of uh, correlation where we were talking about the extent of relationship between two variables. And those variables could be a variable y1 and a variable y2. And in that context, I talked about the direction of the relationship and the extent of the relationship. And both the direction and the extent of the relationship are shown by the correlation coefficient. And we said that the direction of the relationship could be positive, negative, or no correlation. And the extent of the relationship is also shown by the correlation coefficient, the value of which ranges from uh, minus 1 to plus 1. And we can extend the same concept of correlation instead of exploring the relationship between two variables y1 and y2. Instead, we explore the relationship between a variable y at time t and its lag yt minus k. Right? So in this case, we are exploring the relationship between lagged values. Right? So autocorrelation is because we are looking at auto, which means correlation of a variable to itself. So autocorrelation is a measure of uh, the extent to which lag values are related. For example, we can calculate the correlation between a variable yt and its first lag, yt minus 1. And similarly, we can calculate the second correlation coefficient as the correlation between yt and yt minus 2 up to the kth correlation coefficient which will be the correlation between yt and yt minus k. In this way we'll get all these correlation coefficients. These correlation coefficients will show us the direction of the relationship between a value at uh, time t and t minus 1, t minus 2 up to t minus k and also the extent of the relationship. And again, all these correlation coefficients will be between uh, minus 1 and plus 1. And uh, we can talk about uh, whether the correlation is positive, negative, or no correlation between these lag values, and whether the correlation is strong or weak. We can use this formula to calculate all these correlation coefficients. Yt, that is the tth value, and how far away this tth value is from the mean value and similarly how far away the kth lagged value is from uh, the mean value. For example in the case of uh, this correlation coefficient this will be yt minus y bar that is how far away yt is from the mean value and how far away the first lag value is from uh, the mean value and we're going to sum them up and divide it by the summation of yt minus y bar squared. Now this denominator will always be positive because it's a square and whenever yt is above the mean value and yt minus 1 is above the mean value this term will be positive and this term will be positive and we will get a positive correlation coefficient which shows that both these variables are moving in the same direction. If yt is above the mean value this will be positive but yt minus k is below the mean value, that is this term is negative. In this case, we'll get a negative relationship, which will show us that both these uh, values are moving in the opposite direction. If this correlation coefficient is close to 1, we say that the correlation is strong. And if it is closer to 0, we say that the correlation is weak. Normally, we associate a correlation coefficient greater than 0.73 as having strong correlation. Hence, if a correlation coefficient is above 0.73, we say that there is strong correlation between uh, two variables. A correlation coefficient between 0.33 and 0.73 is called moderate correlation and uh, correlation coefficient less than 0.33 is weak correlation. Again, the concept of autocorrelation is the same as you saw in the case of correlation. 
all we are doing here is instead of looking at two variables we are looking at correlation coefficients between any value at time t and a value at yt minus k so for example if you have a series like yt say 1 4 5 the lagged value in this case will be because we do not have a lag value here but the first lag is 1 okay so at time t minus 1 we do not have any lag value at t equals 2 our lag value is 2 minus 1 what was the value of variable y t at t1 it was 1 that is why it's 1 here similarly at t3 the lag value is 2 and 4 and so on so we can also calculate the second lag which will be 1 2 and so on now we will be calculating correlation coefficients between these values so all we did was we created lag values and explored uh, the correlation coefficient between uh, these lag values right so this is how you calculate uh, autocorrelation which is the correlation between uh, various lag values uh, these correlation coefficients will show us whether the direction of the relationship is positive negative or no correlation and the extent of the relationship will be shown by these correlation coefficients and you can categorize these correlation coefficients into three categories strong moderate and weak correlation in the next video i'm going to talk about a very important concept of looking at these correlation coefficients using acf or autocorrelation function because looking at the numerical values could be messy so a better way of looking at uh, these correlation coefficients is to look at the correlogram which shows us a plot and using that uh, acf plot will be able to explore various patterns in uh, a time series we can observe trend seasonality or we can conclude that a series shows uh, white noise all right i'll see you in the next video bye bye